and welcome to the Genshin Impact version 2.2 special program. I'm one of your hosts, Sarah Miller-Cruz, and I voice the female traveler, Lumine. Hey everybody, I'm Zach Aguilar, voice of the male traveler, Ether, and today we're joined by... Greetings everyone, I'm Christian Banis, and I voice Toma in Genshin Impact. Ahoy there, you don't know how long I've been waiting to see you. <laughs> yes. Hey, and we've been waiting to see you too. It's so good to have you with us today, Christian. How does it feel to be in chibi form for once? Honestly, it's kind of great. And the special program has always held a really big place in my heart. So it's really cool I'm on it. Plus, it's kind of nice we get to meet in a tea house too. Well, it is one of Toma's favorite hangout spots. <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> I'm so excited, guys. All right, well, let's get things rolling with a first look at the trailer for version 2.2 into the perilous labyrinth of fog. All right, Yay! here we go. As soon as the melody began, my mind began to drift, and I could hear the sound of someone playing along with me. Come, try it for yourself. It's all yours. Never thought I'd run into familiar faces so far from home. This place, yes, this used to be my dominion. It's the scent of monsters, the aroma of battle. I don't care how strong they are, they'll be ashes when I'm finished with them. Please, allow me to assist you in battle with Shikifuda and Onmyoto. Ah, the monsters here are strong. Fierce fighting awaits us. It would appear that this place is some sort of combat training ground. There's nothing but fighting and slaughter to be had here. Now that we're all here, what do you say we get to the bottom of this? Where are we headed this time? Don't get too close! Here's Becca! Version trailers are always so exciting to see for the first time. I'm sure our viewers noticed lots of new things in that trailer. Yeah. But don't worry, we'll be diving into all the new content soon. Yep, and before we do that, let's get to our first redemption code. Yeah, yeah. sounds good.
we got to get down to the market. They slash the prices on fish around this time of day. Oh, and if you find something that you just can't do without, I'll help you haggle the price down. <laughs> That's me. <laughs> Finally, Toma's ready to join the team. It <laughs> sounds like he's pretty good at bargaining. Well, at your service, my lady. <laughs> so, Christian, you definitely know Toma inside out by now. Why don't you take the lead here and introduce Toma for us? Yeah, sure thing. You know, players have already seen quite a bit of Toma throughout the Inazuma storyline. And though we met Toma in Inazuma, he was actually born in Mondstadt. Oh. Yeah, I know. Now, he's a well-known fixer in Inazuma, as well as chief retainer of the Kamisato clan. Gotcha. As the clan's housekeeper, he's very good at various housekeeping skills. You know, stuff like trimming the courtyard, cooking and sewing, and, you know, bargaining. Some even say that with him around, the Kamisato clan has no need for other attendants. Oh, okay. Basically, he's really good at taking care of everything. <laughs> yeah, and when it comes to fighting, Toma is also a reliable teammate. He holds a pyrovision and wields a polearm as his weapon. Nice. When he uses his elemental skill, Blazing Blessing, Toma deals AoE pyro damage. This skill also applies pyro to Toma and unleashes a defensive blazing barrier. What's special about this shield is that its damage absorption can stack. So, if another blazing barrier is obtained again, then the remaining damage absorption of the existing blazing barrier will stack, and its duration will be refreshed. There is a limit to the stacks of damage absorption, of course, but I think it's enough to make Toma a reliable protector of the team. After unlocking the talent Imbricated Armor, when obtaining or refreshing a Blazing Barrier, the current active character's shield strength will increase for a certain duration. Ooh. Nice. <laughs> and finally, we have his Elemental Burst. When Toma unleashes his Elemental Burst Crimson Oyoroi, he slices his spear through his foes with roaring fires that deal pyro damage and weave themselves into a scorching Oyoroi. Ooh, that sounds cool. But you're going to have to tell us what Oyoroi is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sure thing. So Oyoroi is a kind of armor. Okay, so it basically serves as another shield? Well, it's not only like a shield. The normal attacks of active characters affected by the Scorching Oyoroi will trigger fiery collapses. These collapses deal AoE pyro damage and summon blazing barriers. After unlocking the talent Flaming Assault, the damage dealt by Crimson Oyoroi's fiery collapses are increased by a certain percentage of Toma's maximum HP. Okay, it really feels like a lot of Toma's talents are centered around shields. And given that a vision represents its owner's ambition, you could say that Toma's ambition is protecting people. <laughs> Isn't that nice? Aw, so nice. <laughs> and with this elemental burst, not only does Toma protect his party members with his shield, but he also provides extra pyro damage for the active character. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and with the effect of the imbricated armor talent I mentioned earlier, after unleashing his elemental burst, the active character's normal attacks actually help strengthen the shield. Okay, that's cool. So basically, the more you attack, the stronger the shield becomes. Pretty much. And nice. Toma also has a pretty special exploration talent. Once we have obtained Toma, successful fishing attempts in Inazuma have a 20% chance of scoring a double catch. Ah, oh, nice. That'll definitely come in handy. <laughs> right? And on that note, let's move on to version 2.2's event wishes. <laughs> All right, sounds let's good. Let's do it. In version 2.2, Child, Tartaglia, will be appearing in his Event Wish rerun, followed by Hu Tao in her own Event Wish rerun. Our new character, Toma, will be available in the latter Event Wish with Hu Tao and will enjoy a nice drop rate boost. <laughs> nice. Awesome! I'm sure everyone will love having another chance to get these characters. Yeah. Speaking of new things, we'll also be seeing lots of new weapons landing in version 2.2. First, we have the new 5-star bow. Polar Star, as well as several new four-star weapons, including the Claymore, Akuwamaru, the Polearm, Wavebreaker's Fin, and the bow, Moton's Moon. Ooh, sweet! And these four-star weapons look like they're a series. <laughs> yeah, and aside from the new character and weapons, we will also be getting new hangout events in version 2.2. This time, we'll be hanging out with Toma and Zayu. Ooh, we get to hang out with Sayu! <laughs> I can't wait to see what we'll get to do together. <laughs> well, you can definitely count on her sleeping. <laughs>
I mean, she could probably take us along for her everyday routine in the Shimatsuban. <laughs> True. <laughs> Maybe she'll teach us ninjutsu, who knows? But, I mean, come on guys, aren't you curious at all about the Toma hangout? Um, we already trust Toma. He'll probably have his whole hangout organized for us. <laughs> oh, totally. Judging from Toma's personality and background, we'll probably be learning some housekeeping from him, if anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so all we need to do is have some story keys ready and wait for these Inazuma adventures to go live. <laughs> Next up, we have an inside scoop on the all-new area to explore in version 2.2, Surumi Island. It looks like it's covered in dense fog. <laughs> exactly. <I'm scared>. <laughs> <laughs> well, picture this. An island that has always been something of a mystery for outsiders. Dense fog creating a gloomy atmosphere, and the visibility is poor. It's easy for inexperienced travelers to get lost in this fog, so few people ever dare to visit Surumi Island. Ooh. Hey, we're adventurers, right? Uh, mysteries are what we chase after. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And there will definitely be new treasure chests waiting to be discovered. And you know, aside from the new island area, travelers will be encountering some new monsters in the upcoming version too. Let's take a look at their gameplay. Whoa. Yeah. It looks scary. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, these new scary looking monsters are called Rift Hound Whelps and Rift Hounds. Judging from the names, we can tell that they sort of come from the same species. They're like scary, but like also kind of awesome. I don't know. <laughs> Speaking of them being awesome, rumors say that these are monstrous beasts capable of corroding the boundaries of the world. They are mysterious monsters from the abyss and are divided into four types according to their different elemental powers. These monsters can strike forward with their piercing claws, dealing elemental damage. During battle, they can go invisible, stealthily moving around the battlefield to attack. And most importantly, Rifthound Whelps and Rifthounds have a very unique attack mechanic. Once their attacks hit an active character, that character, as well as other characters in the party, will be continually affected by the corrosion status. Affected characters will lose HP every second, and even the characters with shields will not be immune to this corrosion effect. Oh man. Whoa. I mean, they might look scary, but I'm sure we can handle them. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, and well, that's everything we have for our new monsters. In the next section, we'll get a peek at the events coming our way in 2.2. Yes, but before we get there, it's time to give away our second redemption code. Yes. <laughs> da -da -da.
welcome back, travelers! Next up, we'll be revealing the events coming in version 2.2. The first event on our list is called Labyrinth Warriors. Oh, okay. I'm seeing a theme here. The <laughs> word labyrinth was also in the title of the version trailer, so we know this will be an important event. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? And the warriors part is straightforward enough. Seems we are getting some more combat in this event. Yep. In this event, we'll be entering a domain in Inazuma called the Mystic Onmyo Chamber. Joining us along the way will be a paper figure called Shiki Taisho, who will be providing some help to us throughout the adventure. Also making an appearance in the event storyline will be the 11th Fatui Harbinger Tartaglia, aka Child, as well as the resident rock star of Leah, Shinyan. Ah, nice. it's gonna be great to see them in the storyline, but I gotta say, what an interesting combination. <laughs> yeah, totally. And what's interesting, though, is that Child is the third Fatui Harbinger we've seen set foot in Inazuma. Given that the Fatui are not the most welcome guests in Inazuma, you can't help but wonder what he's doing there. Totally. Yeah, and I mean, the same for Shinyan, too. Yeah. What brings a rock star to Inazuma? I guess we'll have to wait until the upcoming version to find out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and in addition to the storyline, we'll also have new event gameplay. Let's dive into some of the details. All right. All right. As I mentioned before, we will be entering the bizarre and unpredictable domain that is the Mystic Onmyo Chamber. Monsters and hidden dangers await us there, and travelers will need to deploy two parties of characters before initiating the trial. A combat party and a support party. Luckily, we can use Shiki Taisho's charm magic to give us the upper hand. Travelers may select certain Shiki Fuda before entering the domain. These Shiki Fuda are like magic seals that will provide us with a variety of assistance while inside the domain. Some Shiki Fuda can summon spirits, some can create barriers, while others can buff the active character. After making all the necessary preparations, we'll be ready to face whatever waits for us in the domain. There are five levels in the Mystic Onmyo Chamber, and each level will have multiple rooms to explore. Random monsters will appear in the rooms, and travelers will randomly obtain different items after defeating the monsters, including Battered Shiki Fuda, Damage Replicas, and Age Tokens. Battered Shiki Fuda can be used to obtain buffs in the challenges, Damage Replicas can be used to enhance Shiki Taisho's abilities, and Age Tokens can be exchanged in the event shop for valuable rewards. Oh man, <laughs> good stuff. For sure. Thanks for the breakdown. <laughs> Okay, so moving to our next event, Shadow of the Ancients. This event has to do with our new area, Surumi Island. During an investigation commission, the traveler happens to encounter a ruin grader with regenerative powers. Whoa. <laughs> Yikes. Whoa. Seems like the ruin grader has a special source of energy. Yes, and that's why we also call it an anomalous model ruin grader. In the event, our task will be to investigate this grader's regenerative powers. <sighs> if it's ancient machines we're dealing with, we'll definitely need a scholar or someone to guide us. Yup, you're right! In fact, we'll be pairing up with a scholar from Sumeru during this adventure. The event is divided oh. into three phases. First is investigative surveys. During this phase, the Sumeru scholar will give us a special kind of prospector gadget. Travelers will need to explore different areas with these prospectors in search of components to repair important ancient devices called Persina's Spikes. These devices can be used to cut the flow of power to the anomalous model ruin grader. The special prospectors we will be using are called Ayesha's Chaos Prospectors. When the target is out of range, it will point towards the approximate direction of the target. And once the target is within range, it will mark the location of the target for us. Travelers can place up to three prospectors at once. As soon as a fourth one is placed, the first prospector will be automatically retrieved. The survey sites span across Mondstadt, Liyue, and Inazuma. After we've collected all the necessary components, we can prepare Persina's spikes, which will then stop the Ruin Grader from regenerating. However, we still need to test whether these spikes are fixed before we get to confront the anomalous model Ruin Grader. Which leads us to the second phase, Data sampling! <laughs> Man, this sounds like some legit research is happening. <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> In this phase, we'll test the functionality of the spikes by recharging them. Once we start the challenge, we'll have to use electro attacks to activate Persina's spikes and continue charging them. Please note that the spikes will attract nearby opponents to come and attack them. And if the spikes are hit by an enemy, the spike's integrity will drop. If one spike's integrity drops to zero, then the challenge will fail. 
So be careful not to let the monsters damage the spikes. Okay, okay. And once we've collected enough data, we'll get to the third and final phase of the event, live testing. Yay! Wait, we're still testing even in the final phase? <laughs> well, let's say it's like an open beta. Travelers will have to charge all of Persina's spikes within the time limit to cut the anomalous model ruin grader off from its power source and finally defeat it. But note that if you defeat it before cutting off the power source, the Ruin Grader's self-repair mechanism will be triggered, which will then cause it to re-enter an active state. Oh, okay, okay, so let me get this straight. This thing will just keep regenerating over and over again? Unfortunately, yes. But the Ruin Grader's not invincible. Just like a normal Ruin Grader, we can attack the cores mounted on its head and legs to immobilize it, which will help us defeat it more effectively. Our next event to expect in version 2.2 is called Tuned to the World Sounds. Wow, that sounds poetic. Yeah, Yeah, it's because Kazuo is involved, obviously. <laughs> you know, because he has a poetic soul. Yeah, okay. <laughs> anyway, in this event, Kazuo will give us a floral zither, which we will use to perform music in the event. That's right, the rhythm game is coming back. All right. And this time, we get to be accompanied by another character when we perform in the event. Yes, that's so cool. <laughs> right? There are a total of seven characters that will play music with us. They are Ningguang, Zhongli, Kuching, Xiao, Kokomi, Ayaka, and the Raiden Shogun. Each character has their own song and performances will be split into normal, hard, and pro difficulties. Normal difficulty is unlocked by default, and travelers will need to complete the available difficulty with at least a Euphonia rating to unlock the subsequent difficulty level. Anyway, enough of me just talking about it. <laughs> Let's check out how the event looks in-game. Sounds great. Where to next? Oh boy. <laughs> Pro. Jumping right in, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, oh, I, no. I, I've done this before. I'm, I'm good. Hey, is that A holding a liar? It. That's cool. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. But that is such a nice scenery to play. Oh, I know, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> this pro difficulty, it looks hard. But as you can see, uh, before, travelers will need to press the rhythm points when the ring shrinks down to around each point. And then they can score bonus points for timing consecutive rhythm points correctly. Oh, gotcha, that's cool. Look at the long note. It's a new mechanic for this event. You should press and hold down the note until the light strip disappears to score. It does not look easy. <laughs> <laughs> ah, challenge accepted, man. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can, I can do it. <laughs> yes, can you, you can. Zach? Yes, you can, Zach. <laughs> I, I guess believe in you. We'll have I to you. <laughs> wait and see. <laughs> oh, hey, the sound of the lyre is actually kind of different from the sound of our zither. So peaceful sounding. And then it is like all these successive notes all in a row. Yeah, imagine trying to hit all of those at the same time. I know. <laughs> I'm imagining myself playing right now. I know, right? I'm so excited to give it a try. a pretty good score. <laughs> well, that's all we've got for the Tune to the World Sounds event. I hope all you travelers will enjoy playing music alongside your favorite characters. Next, we have another event called Dreams of Bloom. Ooh, fancy. Yeah. The event is initiated by an Inazuman florist named Sakuya. During the event, travelers can submit the materials Sakuya requests daily to obtain some special seeds from her. We can then plant these seeds in a Path of Value luxuriant glebe in the Serena teapot. After waiting for some time, the seeds will then grow into beautiful flowers called dream blooms, which is an amazing name, by the way. <laughs> I know, right? And you know, it looks like we'll have multiple kinds of dream blooms. <laughs> That's right. Sakuya will prepare three different kinds of dream bloom seeds for us during the event. Star hibiscus seed, pear bell seed, and silk pod seed. 
What's special here is that even the same type of seed can grow into different colors. Yo, it's sort of like a mystery prize. <laughs> I yeah. know, right? Also, travelers will be able to send their flowers to each other. Isn't that exciting? Oh, that's so sweet. So we can send the flowers we already collected to our friends who might need them. Yep. That's cool. Yeah. In addition, the grown flowers can also be used as furnishings to decorate our realms. Once travelers have completed certain challenges, we can obtain Sakuya's special gardening package and choose one of the three flower stands that we prefer. We can also customize flower arrangements in our stands and make them into unique furnishings for ourselves. Hmm. Well, looks like we'll be seeing some customized flower stands appearing in our teapots. You bet! But please note that after the event ends, the flower seeds from this event will also disappear. So be sure to participate in the event before they're gone. I will! <laughs> <laughs> and besides all these events, we will also be seeing another return of the Leyline Overflow event. Yes! During the event, we will have three chances daily to collect double rewards from overflowing Blossoms of Wealth or Blossoms of Revelation. This event always makes things so much easier for leveling up your characters, right? <laughs> yeah, especially when you have a lot of characters to work on. Oh, I know. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> all right. That's about all we have for the events in version 2.2. Now let's move on to some great updates coming to the Serena Teapot. Yay! In version 2.2, the new realm style, Silken Courtyard, as well as a series of brand new Serena Teapot furnishings will become available for travelers to enjoy. All right, it's time for some Inazuma vibes in our teapots. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh, look at that sunset. This is just gorgeous. Everything is so beautiful. I, this it's feels so, so peaceful too. I yeah, know. I just feel like like watching it is so peaceful. It's awesome. Oh, it's so cool. But how do we get this realm style? Okay, well, once travelers have upgraded their sacred Sakura's favor to level forty, they can claim the rewards to unlock the silken courtyard style. Wow, level forty! <laughs> I know, right? The good news is that even while your sacred Sakura hasn't reached level 40, you can still gain a variety of new Inazuma-styled furnishing blueprints and furnishing set blueprints in the coming version. And on that note, we'll also have a new way of collecting blueprints in version 2.2. Inside the new Surumi Island area lies a brand new type of treasure chest called Remarkable Chests. Travelers will be able to obtain blueprints by finding and opening these chests. Remarkable! <laughs> <laughs> we can also obtain some all-new furnishing blueprints by purchasing them from Tubby the Teapot Spirit, or by receiving them as rewards from certain world quests. In version 2.2, a new furnishing type will be added to the Serena Teapot system called a floating platform. Basically, it's like a type of rock that floats in the air. Oh, uh, sort of like Plostrite from the Lantern, right? Yeah, but with these floating platforms, we can actually set a certain height for them to float at. And just like any other landform, we can place furnishings on it. And with that, we can start creating our own Adepti abodes inside our realms. Yes! In addition, there will also be some optimizations to the Serena Teapot system. Starting from version 2.2, we can learn blueprints from several new places, like through the Create Furnishing menu inside the Serena Teapot, through the Forge, and through the Crafting Bench. Oh, that definitely makes learning blueprints a lot more convenient. Yeah, and aside from optimizations to the Serena Teapot system, version 2.2 will also include an optimization to the storage capacity of our inventory. After the version update, the maximum artifacts we can store in our inventory will be increased from 1,000 to 1,500. Oh, that's sick! Right? Yeah, and that should be just about all we have regarding the version update. Oh, awesome! Man, we covered a lot of content today. But hold on, we're not finished yet! Next up, we're excited to announce a collaboration between Genshin Impact and Razer. Oh, man! What? Later this month, Razer will be releasing a range of Paimon-themed gear, including a wireless ergonomic mouse, mouse mat, and an ergonomic gaming chair. It's always reassuring to know that Paimon's got your back as you journey through the world of Tevat, and now in more ways than one. <laughs> and to sweeten the deal, co-branded products also come with bonus in-game rewards. Travelers can head over to the official Razer webpage for more information on this special lineup. Oh man, I can't wait. I'm so excited! Yay. <laughs> and with that note, let's give away the third redemption code for today. Dun, 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 All right. Dun.
Well, it seems like the version 2.2 special program is finally reaching its end. <sighs> and I gotta say, that was very informative. So tell us, Christian, how did you like doing a special program with us? Oh man, it was so cool. Like, we saw all the new events, uh, we saw the new Serena teapot updates, which look amazing. There's terrifying monsters, and you know, of course, Toma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I also can't wait for Toma and the Serena teapot updates and the monsters. Ah, it's gonna be great. And Christian, it was so awesome having you on the special program. Hey, well, thanks for having me. <laughs> well, I think it's about time to say goodbye. I hope you all enjoy the version 2.2 updates, and thanks for watching. See you all in Genshin Impact version 2.2. Bye. 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 See you later. <laughs> <laughs>